Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire, and by Tri-State Megabucks and the New Hampshire State Lottery, helping New Hampshire schools one ticket at a time. Hello again, everybody, and welcome into another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lusk with Mike Morin. We have reached week three of our last ladder series of the season as we look for our final participant in the tournament of champions at the end of the year but a nice mix of bowlers who have been on television very much and a lot of real icons in the game good example today mike yao his uh, second week hoping that the sophomore jinx doesn't strike but he's got a tough assignment with very experienced mark gregory two weeks ago we saw chris Caposi defeat mike morgan last week it was mike yao eliminating chris Caposi, setting up this afternoon's match let's meet our bowlers last week's winner our number three seed he's from london Londonderry, New Hampshire. Welcome back, Mike Yao. And a pretty darn good debut for him last week, averaging 117. He holds the Lita Lane's house record right here for a single game at 213. His high triple is 459, and yes, this is his home lanes, Lita Lane's he, in Nashville. He rolled a 665 in the roll-off to earn the number three seed, a 382 last week in defeating Chris Caposi's 349. His opponent, our number two seed from Beverly, Massachusetts, Mark Gregory. 134 average for Mark. High single 192. His best triple is 508. And he bowls at Metro Bowl in Peabody and Park Place in Wyndham. And Mark rolled a 687 in the roll-off to earn that number two seed. It's Mike Yao and Mark Gregory when we come back to Lita Lanes for Candlepin Stars and Strikes right after this. We began with five outstanding bowlers. We're down to three. As this week, it's Mike Yao taking on Mark Gregory. As up the ladder, we go with Bobby Betancourt waiting in the wings. And this afternoon, Mike Yao will be first to bowl here at Lita Lanes in Nashua, taking on second-seeded Mark Gregory. There you see Mike bowling in his home lanes, Lita Lanes. First ball right in the pocket, and the five-pin still stands. Mike Yao from Londonderry. Missed the spare. 213, his high single, the Lita Lane's house record, as Mike told you at our open. All right, right back, Michael. Come on. Starts off with a 10 box. 48 years old. A sales support engineer for Phillips Medical Systems. He and Joanne have been married for 22 years. Three children, Michael, Sheena, and Stephen. He really is a very nice man. He's uh, fun to talk to. Very nice spirit about him. It's a good shot. And the first mark of the match belongs to Mike Yao. And we get a look at veteran Mark Gregory. Mark's 47 years old, a mailroom coordinator for the Automobile Insurers Bureau of Massachusetts. Bowling out of the Metro Bowl in Peabody and Park Place in Wyndham. He was at the Rock and Bowl at Pilgrim Lanes back in February where Michael and I participated. And had our grudge match, which you'll get to watch during the Tournament of Champions. Mm. All right, 9 10, 9 10. A lot of the Pro Bowlers were there. It was great. It was a great day. Fun was had by all. A lot of money raised for a great cause to send those kids to Canada. They went last week, by the way. Mark's been bowling for 39 of his 47 years. He's a single guy, likes to play golf and softball. Yep, single guys can do that. <laughs> and last time on TV is the number five seed. He beat Paul Barassa and then was defeated by Gary Carrington, 392 to 386. That was back in November. Hit the triple strike jackpot for $700 in a 183 game. Had a 450 triple back on November 21st. Remember that. Triple strike jackpot, by the way, is at 575 this week. 575 hit by Chris Sargent three weeks ago. Missed the spare by picking the head pin off the two. And has to settle for a nine box. A lot of jewelry for Mark Gregory, six WCBC Pro titles, five Massachusetts State titles, 11 New Hampshire State titles. His mantle is crowded with 
hardware. Mike Yao, good first ball. Can he break up the split? No. Tough shot here. Speaking of trophies, Dick, talking to Mike Sargent a couple of weeks ago when he was here with his son, Chris. He, of course, is one of the winningest bowlers ever. He told me that he threw out anything that wasn't a first-place trophy. Anything less than first, threw out. Guy's a fierce competitor. Right through the middle. That was one of those wind shots. Try to throw it between the two of them and hope that the breeze knocks him down. Hardly ever happens. And a nine box. Runner up today will uh, pocket $550 plus whatever bonus money they may earn. And they, winner will earn a spot to take on Bobby Betancourt for the final position in the Tournament of Champions that will be decided next week. Got an email here from Russ McComber of Brockton, Massachusetts, Mike. My name is Russ McComber. On August 1st, 2004, I decided to start bowling Candlepin after a 23-year layoff. And prior to that, he bowled 10 pins. In September, he joined the Pinups and Company League at Westgate Lanes in Brockton. It's a small league of around 34 members. They bowl Wednesday mornings. The patriarch of the league is Joe Barry. He's 94 years old. Wow. He's been bowling Canada for years, and there's a strike for Mark Gregory. Nice ball, Mark. Watch it again to the Brooklyn side. The eight pin was the last to go. 94-year-old Joe Barry has an average of 74. And a high single of 93, a high triple 254. His birthday was March 26th, just passed. Could we wish yeah. him a happy birthday? That was yesterday, if you're watching on Easter Sunday for the first time. So happy birthday. Oh, you bet. To Joe Barry. <laughs> Two pieces of wood. Roadblock for, for uh, Mark Gregory looked like a guaranteed spare. Russ McCumber asks a question, too. In most polling houses, there are arrows on the lanes. I don't know if we'll be able to get a shot of the arrows that are about 10 feet down from the foul line here at Lita Lanes. With my background in 10-pin, I use the arrows, but talking with members of his league, many look at the pins, not the arrows, wondering what the percentage is of people who use the arrows in Candleton bowling as opposed to looking at the pins. Does anybody use the arrows as opposed to looking at the pins in Candleton bowling? Thank you for your time. Sometime I hope to meet you in person, maybe even get on the show, which is my goal. Keep up the good work, Russ McComber. Well, you know what? If we have a little extra time, Dick, when we do the interview at the end of the show, let's ask, we'll ask both those bowlers what they use. Because 10 pin bowlers do use the arrows, and there are also spots as well that you don't always see on candle pin lanes. Spots and arrows. Just missed the single pin for the 10, so a nine box for Mike. Arrows are right at the lob line here at Lita Lanes and at many bowling establishments. There's a 10 pin. There is no lob line. I don't know with the uh, shadows here and the glare if we'd be able to get a shot of the arrows. So. Maybe we'll take a try, Kevin, if we can get one of the cameras to show the arrows. Yeah, maybe between strings if possible if we can get a shot at it. Try. Try. Rep 10. Not able to convert the spare. Kevin, of course, Kevin LaFond, our director. There's the arrows. You can see them right there. The arrows right down the lane at Lita Lane. Some bowlers, again, in 10-pin, it's more prevalent. Bowlers pick an arrow and use the second or third arrow or a spot in between. In right. Candlepin, it's not as prevalent, I don't believe, for bowlers to use that as a marker. We'll ask our bowlers. Thanks, Kevin, for the great shot. Thanks to our camera crew. Look at that. He cut it too thin. How often do you see that? He cut it too thin. Cut the five in front of the seven and eight. You hardly ever see that. A 
Nine blocks for Mark. To have that kind of an accuracy 16 feet away is truly amazing. Yeah, you hardly ever see anybody make the 5 7 split pure, pure splitting, extending the 5 pin over to the 7 pin. It doesn't it's happen often, does it? Pure luck when it does happen, of course. Though. Spread Eagle and the 9 pin. He'll go for the 3 on the left side. Reason being, the pin in the back on the right side gives him another element to shoot at, and you right. get a crazy bounce. Sometimes you get a backdoor reaction, and you can make the shot that way. That's a good mm, 10 box for Mark. That's a great 10 for sure. And we're still tied, Dick, after six marks, each bowler with just one mark. I mentioned Kevin LaFont is our director. It gives us an opportunity to acknowledge the rest of the crew. Keith Webb's our engineer. Kristen Doobie, Larry Haber, and Tanya Perry, our camera crew, giving you the great shots. Chuck Lothrop's on replay, Rich Burke's on audio. Kristen Doobie's also handling graphics. They make it possible for you to watch the finest candlepin bowlers in the world each and every week right here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and they do a great job. Sometimes under less than ideal conditions, I might add. As we tape on this rainy, snowy day in March, it's not always the easiest thing to do. Remember, Dick, in our first season, this would have been March 31st, 1998. It was 89 degrees here in Nashville that day. It seems so far off in the distance, doesn't it, the way the weather's been? One mark apiece for our bowlers. Mike watches the pins continue to fall. Well, pin is suddenly not of any use back in the last row. I'm not sure of that, Mike. I think it might come into play. No, not with that shot. Like the two and the six. An eight box. 81 through 8 for Mike Yao. Neither bowler really finding the range. Mark Gregory was number 5 ranked in the WCBC last year, 2003-2004 season. That's uh, accumulated pins for the six tournaments. <laughs> Latest one was held a couple of weeks ago, but because of the timing of our taping, we... Uh, the taping a few days before the tournament, so we won't have any of that information for you till sometime in April. Whoa, we almost made it, bouncing the pin nice across. Bit, nice bit. Some of our viewers are very creative, Michael, as you know, and we'd love to hear from you, by the way, wherever you may be. We'd love to hear from you via email, regular mail. There you see our email address. We'd love to hear from you via email, and you can also send us a card or a letter to 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038, Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Good first ball and a strike from Mark Gregory. Watch it one more time. This one didn't take long at all. The 4-7, the last to go, but they didn't wait very long. So Mark will jump into an early lead. Mike Yao doesn't have the kind of control that he did last week. Not quite on the head pin. No. This is the 1, 2, 4, and 10. Some wood against the 10 pin. That's a great shot. And the wood certainly helped out on the 10 pin. It gave him a lot of margin. Watch this wood on the right side. Where the ball? The ball went right into the 10 pin. It really didn't need it as it turned out. Well done for Mike Yao. Working on a spare going to the 10th frame. That's a good ball. And look at this. What a mess. The 5, 7, 10. How do you end up with those three pins standing when you throw the ball right down the middle? The ball was flat, just didn't have anything on it. And now the wood falls off the deck, so there's no wood to help out. Which makes this shot virtually impossible. You need something really freaky to happen here.
He's at 106. 107 first string for Mike Yao. Mark Gregory comes in working on a strike. When we begin our second string, I'll tell you about an email we got from Tom Adams of Marblehead, Massachusetts, who was very creative. Two in a row for Mark Gregory. And we're looking at $575 in our triple strike jackpot. He hit it last year for $700. And now an opportunity, $575 in the triple strike jackpot. Good first ball, there it is. He threw a good ball. Not much to show for it though. That was a Brooklyn hit. Wasn't a real tight hit. Still could have carried it though. This is a bonus money shot right here. Not an easy one. He threw it all about the only place he could. They have about a marked lead going into the second game. He is at 120, 128. To a Mark Gregory to 107 for Mike Yao after one string at Lita Lanes. The lead is 21 for Mark Gregory over Mike Yao as we continue with Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua. Mark Gregory, first to bowl, string number two from Lita Lanes in Nashua. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin. Happy to have you with us for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We're here every Saturday and Sunday at noon. The new show is on Sunday most of the time. The repeat is the following Saturday. Love to have you watch either one or both of the shows, and we appreciate the fact that you're there. We want to welcome the New England Ford dealers as one of our new participating sponsors on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Happy to have them with us for the rest of the season, and we hope many seasons to follow. The New England Ford dealers, part of the Candlepin Stars and Strikes family. It's a good nine box for Mark. He was struggling there. And if you are watching today, Easter Sunday, as we speak, the 17th annual Easter Sunday Classic Singles Scratch Tournament, 20 strings goes on right here at Lita Lanes for the first prize of $5,000. And there's a strike for Mark Gregory. Not a great hit. Watch it. It's way to the left of the head pin. Just grabs the head pin going by. It sent the head pin off the deck, as a matter of fact. He hit it so fine, yet it came back on the, off the wall and wiped out the right side, and he had a strike for his effort. Interesting. That was an interesting replay because the head pin was hit so fine it went off the deck without hitting anything and then came back and got a lot. Come on, Michael, make a shot here. You got some help. Mike Yao on lane 34 with the two and the six. Oh, a great oh shot my. by Mike Yao. That's called really playing the wood. He played the wood to the left. It deflected the ball into the pin, oh, which, which kicked it over perfect. to the six pin. Just absolutely perfectly done. Thing of beauty. Now he needs to build on that spare with a good fill. Not a good ball, missed the head pin, but he's got a good break out of it. Six pins. The one, two, four, ten. No wood to help out. Winner of this match moves on to play Bob Betancourt for the ladder championship and a berth in the Tournament of Champions at the end of the year. Joining five other terrific bowlers who are set to participate in the Tournament of Champions. <laughs> that will be an eight box. Mark Gregory works on a strike. He missed the head pin. Mentioned the Easter Sunday tournament going on today. If you're watching it for the first time on March 27th, the Lita Simino Memorial Ladies 20 String Tournament. Single scratch is coming up on June 5th for Sunday in June. $5,000 guaranteed on that as well. And what a spare for the great Mark Gregory. Nice shot, Mark. Terrific spare. Great shot by Mark Gregory. Watch it again. 
A lot of wood on the deck to be sure, but still it had to hit the head pin. That was key, and he did, and the rest took care of itself. Another good first ball. Looking for a backdoor strike that time. Didn't get it, but he's got a piece of wood out there that makes this shot makeable and worth 50 bucks. Turned his back on the shot when he let it go, thinking it might be a big, fat split. Not to me. Three marks in a row for Mark Gregory. Opening some daylight. So Gregory with the first bonus money of the match. Mike Yao tries to follow with a good first ball. The six pin still stands. Can't tell if that wood is frozen to it. I think it is. Didn't make any difference. He was right on it. Good spare from Mike Yao. Needs another mock just to stay within striking distance of leader Mark Gregory. Not a good ball. Just three in the spare. Took out the four, seven, eight in the left corner. He's got no wood, so it's almost like the first ball here again where you want to hit it. Now it's a little bit to the right. Trying to salvage as many pins as he can right now. That's a good 10 box for Mike Yao. We go to the break. Mark Gregory in the lead as we hit the halfway point of the match. We're coming back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Mark Gregory first to bowl as we come back from the break. Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lusk, Mike Moore in Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Mark has three marks in a row. He's opened up a little daylight. Stewart passed the head pin that time, but still has a seven pin drop and a pretty good spare opportunity here. The one, three, ten just picks off the three pin. Mark had a 128 in the first string to Mike Yao's 107. It's a nine box. Still a 73 half for Mark Gregory after a 128 opening string. Just a bit below his 134 average. I mentioned earlier that we're looking for our sixth participant in the Tournament of Champions to join the five others who've already qualified. Oh, look at that. How does that pin still stand? The eight pin. Chris Sargent is the top seed thus far with a 497 triple. That'll be tough to beat. Jeff Surrett, number two. Dave Hodge, number three. Hugh Ferguson, number four. And Craig Holbrook, number five. And next week, we'll know who the sixth entry will be. There's a spare for Mark Gregory in the sixth frame. Mike Yao has a mountain to climb now. He trails by a bunch. You see that 57 pin lead, but that's, of course, he has two boxes to bowl right now. He needs to pick up some ground. Back door <laughs> strike. <laughs> Don't see many of those. Watch the head pin. Not, not nowhere near the head pin. And all, they start falling like dominoes. <laughs> you need to take advantage of that. Ah, that's a good ball Just right like there. That. That was a well-thrown ball. The 10 pin is still standing, and the wood is problematic right now. So he doesn't get the strike he should have and got the one he should not Difficult have. Difficult wood right here. Double wood, one pointing the wrong way. He's got it. Two good boxes for Mike Yao. Yeah, he'll get 11 pins back. Lead is down out of 27 pins for Mike Gregory, who also works on a spare in the sixth box. He missed the head pin there. He's got the one, three, eight, ten. No wood to help out. Played it right between the one and the three, but didn't get it to go. 
Candlepin Stars, the strikes presented by McMulkin Chevrolet, Nashua Mitsubishi, Nashua Hyundai, and McMulkin Cadillac, all in Nashua. By Tri-State Megabucks in the games of the New Hampshire Lottery. You played your number today. Mark right on the head pin. Two, four, six, and ten. Piece of wood in front of the four pin. Play to the outside and only picks the two pin off the four pin, leaving three more standing. So he'll be open in these two boxes, the seventh and eighth. And an eight box. So the door is open here for Mike Yao to take advantage. Mike's working on a couple of marks, looking for some bonus money, his first bonus money of the match. Didn't throw a good ball, but got a pretty good break. No with the help of one, three, six, and eight. Nope. No bonus money this time around. And an eight box. Up against another open frame, an opportunity for him to pick up some ground. Yeah, he's only two and a half marks behind. That's a good first ball, and the five pin stares right back at him. Couldn't get anything to come out of the gutter to, to take out the five pin. Everything went around it. Piece of wood to the left. Can help him a little bit with a errant shot to that side, but he's got it on its own. So that'll narrow the gap a little bit. As we near the end of the second string. I mentioned an email that we received from Tom Adams from Marblehead, Massachusetts. Good first ball by Mark Gregory. You recall Joe Stella was on a few weeks ago and did not pull the best triple that he's ever had in his career at 290 in a losing effort, but Tom Adams wanted us to know that we congratulate Joe Stella for bowling a numerical palindrome for three strings, which is very hard to do. He had a 101, an 88, and a 101. That's it, exactly the same, forward and backwards. Yep. English teachers out there will recognize that as a palindrome. <laughs> I mean, exactly, number for number. Not just the strings themselves, but the arrangement of the numbers. Well, that should Another be two in a row. Watch out. Ooh. Short pin. That pin was flying, and it would have taken it out, but it didn't. Nine pin drop, same pin standing. A couple of solid ten pin leaves for Mark Gregory, both could have been strikes. And that one is that gonna is go nine. in the gutter. That will not count. Off. Nine pin. So he loses a pin, loses the spare, 134. Second string for Mark Gregory. So he hits his average in game number two. 128 first string, 134 second string. Mike Yao needs to put some marks on the board. Right on the head pin and right straight through. Almost a spread eagle. Just four in the mark. One more goes as he picks the three pin off the right side. The six and ten still stand on the right. The two, four, five on the left. Two, four, and eight on the left, I should say. And that's going to be a seven box. One twelve for Mike Yao. He needs a mark desperately to get it down in the 20s. Another good first ball right on the head pin, but a little too full once again. Tough shot here. Two, four, seven on the left. Ten on the right. Piece of wood. Well, 
is it too far behind that two pin or does it factor in? See how he plays it. He does not play the wood. Open frame in the tenth. He will lose more ground. We'd uh, love you to come see us Tuesday, the 5th of April, for the next taping. It'll be five shows that day. We'll start about 9.30 and go till about 4 o'clock for the Tournament of Champions. You can see it before it hits television at Lita Lanes, Tuesday, the 5th of April. 121 from Mike Yao in the second string, 134 from Mark Gregory. A 34-pin lead for Gregory over Yao, headed to string number three when we come back to Lita Lanes for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Mike Yao will bowl first, string number three from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin. It's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And Mike Yao has some work to do. He trails by 34 pins to Mark Gregory starting the third and final string. The winner will take on Bobby Betancourt next week for a berth in the Tournament of Champions. Betancourt, the number one seed in this latter series. That's going to be a seven box for Mike Yao. A tough way to start. Mike turns around with a big smile on his face. You know, he's just oh, having a good field time. Field goal, was it? Did he say field goal yeah. or something? He put it right between the goal posts. He's just having a good old time. Second time on TV after a really great debut last week. And nothing wrong with that shot. It's, mu it's much more fun when you do that. Yes, it is. Watch it again. A little over to the Brooklyn side. The six, nine, and ten, the last to go in a cluster. And the strike for Mike Yao. Now Mark Gregory on lane 34. Punched it through, half Worcester plus one. Got some wood there that'll help out between the two and the four. A lot of pins still standing. Right through oh. the opening, a lot of pins still standing. The only pins that went down, the two, five, and eight. That's an eight box. So Mike Gregory actually picks up another pin on his lead in the first box. Looked better than that, didn't it? Two, four, five, and ten. Some wood right behind the four pin. Got an article here from the community advocate, Mike, mm -hmm. about a bowling alley in Northboro. A six-lane bowling alley has been host to a generation of bowlers for more, over 50 years. Ernie Sawyer Jr. and his late father, Ernie Sawyer Sr., opened the building as a pool room in 1948. Sawyer's Bowling still thriving after all these years in North Pro. Watch it again. That's a great shot, isn't it? Well, he's been all over the place pretty wild this game, this week, actually, after a pretty successful first week when he had 382, defeating Chris Capozzi. He's now really all that consistent. Then he picks up eight pins uh, by virtue of a strike and a fill nine. So that'll put him uh, about two and a half marks now behind Mark Gregory. And a nine box. Right back. This article points out that at Sawyer's Drum in North Row, not much has changed except from the cost. It was 25 cents a string back then. It's 250 today. Ten times the price, yeah. which is not unusual. No, Most bowling centers not. would have that. Have to check that out. Not far from my shop in Hudson. Have to give it a look. They say where it's at. Sawyer's in North Pro. I'll find it. We can start practicing up for next year's yeah. Uh, event. Yeah. As soon as I'm able to walk. Yeah, you had a bit of a spill during a recent cold uh, spate of weather and went down and hurt your, your right knee. That happened after our it did. bowling match. Yeah. That's a an eight box yes. for Mike Yao. So what's the prognosis, Doctor? I'll know better in a couple of weeks. 
Mark Gregory bowling on lane 34. This bowling alley Sawyer's, it gives the address here in Blake Street. If it's still in the same spot on Blake Street in Northborough. Four horsemen. Nice shot by Mark. All right, he'll reclaim some of the pins he lost to the second frame strike for Mike Yao. He seems to be bowling with a lot of confidence. Watch the shot again and the four horsemen go. Put six in the spare. Be a tough spare to make. Three, six, ten on the right. The eight pins in the back row. There's some couple pieces of wood on the deck that could go flying. And they do go flying, but they leave the six and the ten. That will be a nine box. We'll go to the break. Mark Gregory in control of this match as we continue from Lita Lanes in Nashua. You are watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Mike Yao gets set to bowl at Lita Lanes as you look at some of the gathering here at Lita Lanes watching this afternoon's match. Always a great crowd, always a great job done by Ray Simino, Sean Howard, and the staff at Lita Lanes to entertain the gathering. And will he break up the split? He will. The coffee and donuts are out here early. As Mike mentioned, the Tournament of Champions will be taping on April 5th. We'll be starting at 9.30 that morning, so get here early. Missed the spare. Oh. Get here early, get your... Get your best seats in the house, get your coffee and donuts, and settle in for a long day of great candlepin bowling. That'll be a 10 box for Mike. He needed a spare there. Tens are not going to do it for him. They were tied after four in this game. That's a good first ball and another spare opportunity. He can't let these opportunities go by the boards. Got an email here from Steve Chandler. Michael, Steve writes that Thelma Chandler will be 97 on March 11th. That's just passed, of course. She was an avid bowler while living in Melrose and North Andover. She now resides in Alton Bay, New Hampshire, one of the prettiest spots on the earth, and never misses our shows on Saturday and Sunday year-round. That's signed Steve Chandler. Happy belatedly, happy birthday to Thelma Chandler, 97 years young and an avid watcher of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We wish you many more years of health and enjoyment, and thank you for watching our show every week. I love Alton Bay. Do you know, you know that area at I all? I do, yes. One of the prettiest spots in the world. I love the lakes region. Here's a great shot by Mark Gregory. That one will make Thelma smile. That's a great shot. Watch it again. He played the wood perfectly. The wood was angled just right for him. Just because the wood's angled just right doesn't always mean it's an automatic. you got to make the shot, and he made the shot. That's another good first ball for Mark, and they continue to fall. Put nine in the spare. A couple more like that, and it'll be all over for Mike Yao. Bobby Betancourt waits in the wings. See who's going to play him next week for the Tournament of Champions final spot. Birth number six. He's going right at the pin and he makes the spear. Didn't play the wood. I thought he might play the wood. He didn't. He went right at the pin and made the shot. Just because we would do it that yeah. way doesn't mean he would. So Mark Gregory with a couple of marks in a row. Mike Yao now trying to bowl out the string as he is, well, mathematically still alive, yeah, but realistically not. Makes the shot. So Mark makes, uh, Mike Yao makes the spare in the seventh frame. He needs to mark out, run the table. A couple of strikes would certainly help his cause. 
the way Mark Gregory has been bowling, he's not about to be caught. Put six in the spare. The wood helps him out here if he can get a little help. Back door, will he make it? No. And a nine box. Mark Gregory can just about close the door. Yeah, the hourglass sands are just about through for Mikey out. Even with that four pin drop from Mark Gregory. Give it a shot. Six, seven, ten remain. There is no wood. This is for a ten. Well, Mark Gregory hasn't shut him out yet, but it, it's getting close. Watch it. Oh, look at them all move. They all dance that time. In fact, the six pin has been shuttled over a couple of inches closer to the 10, making it an easier spare. Now the 10 moved halfway off spot two, closer to the gutter. It's almost halfway into the gutter. They both danced over. The spare from Mark Gregory, and that'll just about do it with two boxes remaining. Mike Yao will finish up. Mike. Trying to figure out if he deliberately went at it that way or I can't imagine that he would have just uh, misplayed it. You want to go to the pin on the furthest to the left, of course. That's, that's the shot he wanted to make. It's a nine box. He's at 97. Come on, Mike. Make a shot. The one, six, eight, ten. Boy, it looked like he nailed it. Yeah, it sure did. And he ends up getting half of them. And a 10 box and a 107 and a three string total of 335 for Mike Yao after a 382 last week. So Mark Gregory will advance. They continue to fall for Mark, put nine in the spare. Wood squares up a little bit. Someone should yell play of the wood. I haven't heard anybody yell it yet. They usually do in situations like this. The spare for Mark, and now he's looking for some bonus money. That's his fifth mark of the string, but no bonus money yet. He has $50 in bonus money in the match. That came back in the second string. That's the only bonus money we've given away. And he's got a shot at 400 here with another mark and a good fill. That's a pretty good fill. And that's I would bonus say. money. And that's 400. So another $50 in bonus money. And from an artistic success, <laughs> not very high marks, but it goes down as a line drive in the scorebook. Looking for another one. He knows the taste of winning that big triple strike jackpot as he did last November for 700 bucks. Another 
another $25 in bonus money for Mark and a 143 third string, a three string total of 405 and the victory over Mike Yao and Mark Gregory will advance to the championship of the ladder next week against Bobby Betancourt. We'll come back to talk to our bowlers in just a moment when we continue from Lita Lanes in Nashua. You're watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Mark Gregory defeats Mike Yao, 405 to 335. Mike Yao joins us, $550 uh, runner-up money, and you had uh, another hundred and a quarter last week in bonus money. And first time on television, what was the experience like for you? Well, exciting is about the only words I can use. Uh, not really nervous. It was great to bowl against such great bowlers. And hey, <laughs> what can I say? It's tough to get here. Well, we hope to see you again soon. Congratulations to you, Mike Yao, our runner up here this afternoon. And his first time on television. It was nice to see him and we hope to see him again in the future. Now we'll do the bonus ball contest. Michael will pick a card out of the bin, which you can uh, send your postcard in to Lita Lanes, 340 Amherst Street, in Nashville, 03063. Pick a number and we'll see if our bowler can match you up. And we have $50, is it, or $60? 60. $60, $60 in the 60. bonus ball jackpot this time around. It's Mary Jarrick from Derry, and Mark, she wants you to get seven pins down for her for $60 in the bonus ball jackpot. See if we can get a seven, or if we get a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden, Massachusetts. Let's see if Mark can get a seven. It is a seven, eight, oh! <laughs> it's the consolation prize from NNR Trophies. Hey, when you're as hot as you've been, that's you got to expect that to happen. Pins have been falling for you all day. Oh, yeah, I take the price you can get them. You know, Mike was a little bit off, but I took advantage of that, and uh, I'll be happy to go to the next round. Now, you've had uh, a couple of chances today with the triple strike jackpot staring at, back at you. You've hit it before, so right. having hit it before, does that take a little pressure off this, uh, feel the, uh, the butterflies out, or are they still feeling them? Yeah, I still feel it. You know, you, you always want to throw a good ball, and, you know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, well, you know, you got you got double to work on, and... Uh, your score rides up a lot faster. You did you did throw a pretty good ball. It was on the Brooklyn side. It wasn't quite as flush as the other ones were, but it could have gone. Could have, but yeah, it wasn't quite there, you know. Uh, That's right. We want our money's worth. Yeah. We want real yeah. strike. <laughs> yeah. Real strike. You don't want to take a no. soft strike. Yeah. Hey, here's a question for you. You bowled 405, which is great. Yeah. You know, anybody would be thrilled with that, but I got to thinking, your average is 402, so just another day at the office. <laughs> Anytime you hit 400 is good. I mean, um, 130 average, you know, I'll take it any day. One last question. We had an email from somebody uh, wondering if most of the pros use the arrows, markings on the lanes, or if you pin bowl. Is there a consensus between you and your fellow professionals if you uh, area bowl or pin bowl? Um, well, some of us, some of us do both. Um, I primarily line up with the pins, um, and I know there are other people that the spot bowl, as they say. Um, but uh, I primarily look at the pins, and I want to see what I'm hitting, you know? Yeah. Whatever works. It Whatever works. works. today. Mark, congratulations. See you. We'll see you next yep. week. See you soon. Thank Mark you. Gregory, you. our winner here this afternoon, 405 to 335, uh, 400 average. That's something. Next right. week, up the ladder we go to Bobby Betancourt. For Mike Morin and our entire crew, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Dick Lusk. We'll see you next time on Candlepin Stars and Strikes.